in New York and he turned it on and he was so short I said Lord I hope it talks a little while longer next week man that I'm talking about is Dr. Malish Rashadin he is a real show up doctor you know some of us call each other doctor and ain't got nothing to be called doctor for but this is a real show up PhD doctor. But not only does he have an academic doctorate, he has been traveling across the nation and across the world, giving sight to the blind, opening up deaf ears, and calling the dead back to life. I can tell you that Dr. Rashad Dean teaches at California State College, but that's not really important. I can tell you that he is the executive director of the Black Topographical Center here in Los Angeles, but that is not important. I can tell you that he is the national representative for Minister Louis Farrakhan, and that even in itself is not important. But what I can tell you that is of utmost importance today is that he is a God-led man. I can tell you that he is a Holy Spirit-filled man. For the Spirit fills you with power and with wisdom. Need to stop saying the Spirit just makes you shout. That's all it does for some of you. Make you shout and you're bigger just shouting devil. But he has been filled with the power of wisdom, the power of divine knowledge, and the power of righteousness. And so now I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the main cause. Doesn't matter to me that he's a Muslim because he's God's man. And we serve one God whether you like it or not. Whether you call him Allah or you call him Jehovah. Whether you call him Allah or you call him Elohim. Whatever you call him, there's one God. And so this morning, at this hour, won't you stand and greet God's man, Minister Marley? Brothers and sisters, in Islam, we are always taught to begin every important event in the name of Almighty God. And certainly we can find no greater occasion than this momentous, historical, God-inspired occasion here at Ward AME this Sunday morning. So we begin asking the praise, the divine grace, providence, and blessings of Almighty God. So in the name of Allah, to whom praise is due forever. And we forever thank Allah 
for coming as it was written and prophesied that he would come seeking that which was lost and we can find no other people fitting the description of the lost sheep as the book teaches us he would leave the 99 and go after the one all praise is due to Allah we can find no other people fitting the description of the lost sheep the lost brother the lost sister except the 30 to 50 million or more of us here in the hills of North America who are some 10,000 miles away from home a people who have been divided scattered and estranged from each other so we thank Allah for giving to us a divine leader a divine teacher a divine guy who walks the same path that Jesus the master walked we thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and we thank Allah and his messenger for preparing one as a champion for the black man and black woman's cause in this great and dreadful hour in which we have now arrived what the elders call perilous times yes, Minister Louis Farrakhan in their names I greet you with the greeting words of God's peace be unto you assalamu alaikum to my brother friend and indeed my pastor Reverend Frank Reed Sister Reed, the staff and members of Ward African Methodist Church, yes, friends, loved ones, visitors, brothers and sisters, and those who are on assignment. You see, we make no mistake about it. We know that when the Muslim and the Methodist comes together, somebody else has to listen. The scripture says, in the mouth of Jesus the Master, that wheresoever two or more of you are gathered together, there I will be also. But that's the FBI talking too. Wherever two or more of you are gathered together, there he will be also. All praise is due to Allah. I am honored at this invitation. I am so thankful to be able to share these few precious moments with you. For it looks like the dry bones may just be coming together. It looks like after having been scattered in what is called America, the scripture calls it the valley of the shadow of death. Talk back to me, church. It's the valley of the shadow of death. After having been scattered in the valley, it looks like this morning, Sunday morning at Ward, the dry bones are beginning to hook up. The dry bones are beginning to come together. Our text, and we do hope that Reverend Reed's invitation and your invitation is not behind time, nor is it ahead of time, but we believe that it is right on time. Our text this morning is Lazarus come forth. We pray that our text is in context because any text that is not in context as you know is no more than a pretext. But we hope and pray that the text Lazarus come forth is in context. 
I was greatly inspired, perhaps a little differently from some of you, on yesterday at the Ambassador Hotel, where former Ambassador Andrew Young, where Sister Maxine Waters, even our dear sister Rita Walters, our sister Norton, great and brilliant woman, was present in many of the best minds that this country has gathered under one roof. But I was inspired as I sat there. It helped me with my lecture. I've worked on this topic for a couple of weeks now. I stayed up much of the night and got up early this morning. Had a stack of notes, but I had to leave the notes at my seat. I want to come before you like clay in the hands of the divine potter, yes. hoping to be shaped, yes, molded, yes, and fashioned, uh -huh. and used as a divine instrument, yes, that I may touch you yes, wherever you are, yes, that I may be able to reach you. Yes, it is written in the scripture, open your mouth, and I will speak for you. Yes, so I decided, and I hope he doesn't let me down, I decided to just stand up and open my mouth. All praise is due to Allah. Choir saying that it is no secret what God can do. What he did for others, he can do for you. I want you to know that it is no secret it goes beyond the lyrics of the song. It is no secret what God can do for what he has done for others that you study from this book called Bible. What he has done for others 2,000 years ago. What he has done for others 4,000 years ago. It is no secret what he can do. He can do the same thing for you today. All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that this is one of the most misunderstood books in the world, the Bible. Many of us say, oh, I just, I just, I just goes by the Bible, honey. I don't want to hear nothing else. I just goes by the Bible. That's your problem. You go by the book too much. You need to go in the book sometimes. All praise is with your love. With Pastor Reed's permission, we're going to go in the Bible. And we're not going to go by it this Sunday morning. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that of all our studies, history is best qualified and most attractive to reward our research. Yeah. That if we know what happened yesterday, then we can intelligently discuss today. Yeah. For today is built on yesterday, yeah. and tomorrow is built on today. Yeah. And if we know what went down yesterday, then we are not likely to let the same thing go down today. Right. He teaches us that the wise seers, the, the wise minds that came in the great line of divine who could see down the wheel of time. They could see from Genesis to Revelation. It is impossible, brothers and sisters, that they could see down the wheel of prophecy, that they could see footprints that had not yet been made in the sands of time. It is impossible that they could see from cover to cover of the Bible, but they couldn't see you and they couldn't see me. It is impossible that we can read the Bible from cover to cover and we find no mention of Negro, no mention of color, no mention of black, no mention of Afro-American. It is impossible to believe that they missed us. It is impossible to believe that they covered all of the slave-making governments of the past. They covered Pharaoh. They covered Herod. 
They covered Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. They covered all of them from Genesis to Revelation. It is impossible to believe that they missed Jimmy Carter. It is impossible to believe that. All oh, praise is due to Allah. It is impossible. It is impossible that they missed Anderson. It is impossible that they missed Kennedy. It is impossible that they missed Reagan. It is impossible that our condition is not in the book. So since it is impossible and we all agree, then it must be there in another way. The book is written in metaphors, symbols, similes, and parables. And unless we have divine guidance and are inspired by the Holy Spirit when we go in the book, what is this Holy Spirit? Let's stop a minute. We use too many terms and don't understand what we're talking about. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is divine, inspired truth that comes from on high from Almighty God, that comes, from, that comes to us in the night of our ignorance. So they call it in some places a Holy Ghost because it comes in the night of our ignorance. It comes to bring us light to a mind that has been darkened. So the book says when that spirit would come, it says arise and shine for thy light is come. So first we must have divine guidance to go in the book. If we are lacking divine guidance, we go in the book of food and we come out a bigger food. We've got to understand. Lazarus, come forth. That's our text. So since we must be in the book, let us go after ourselves. Yes. Luke, the 16th chapter, the 19th verse, talks about two important characters. Please get your books. Talks about the rich man and Lazarus. If we don't understand the historical context, in the contemporary context is no more than a bedtime story. But the Bible is a book of divine guidance. The Bible is a book of divine inspiration. And for those of you who claim that you don't want to have anything else to do with the Bible, you say you're a nationalist, you say you're a revolutionary, you say you're a pan-Africanist, the Bible can be a road map right. to an oppressed people out of bondage. Right. But we must go in with proper guidance. It says there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple, a royal color, and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously. You know, we haven't been faring like that. We can barely say the word. He fared sumptuously, the book said. Isn't it beautiful how they can term those things? You see, let me stop for a second. Is it all right? You see, I'm happy in the church. Reverend Reed is one of the best Muslims I know, and I'm one of the best Christians that he knows. All praise is due to Allah. All right, we're going back to Lazarus, all right? I mean, it's so good to see some of you smile now. Your jaws were so tight. You looked at me so hard when I came. I said, my God, how am I going to call Lazarus for? But nobody said it would be an easy job because the master didn't have an easy job calling Lazarus forth from the historical context. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus who was laid at his gate full of souls and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his soul. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to go to roots, real roots, to go to root knowledge. He says that it is branch knowledge that divides us. But if we will go down the trunk of the tree of wisdom, to the roots of that tree, then there we will find not only the one God, but we will find oneness, and we will become whole, as the choir says. Lazarus. When we study the etymological root 
Now go get fancy on you. Only me find the origin. How it started. It's made your root. The root or the base of Lazarus, the etymological root is L-A-Z. Isn't it interesting that it's the same base as lazy? L-A-Z-Y? Isn't it interesting that Lazarus, all of his vital signs were good. Heartbeat was very good. He wasn't a blind man. He wasn't crippled. Huh? He wasn't sick of paralysis. He didn't have leprosy. Huh? Did he? According to the book, it infers that he was in good health. Had a few sores, but we're going to even get into that. Lazarus, the same root as lazy. At the gate of the rich man. Now look at poor Lazarus. Can we look at it? Here's Lazarus. Lazarus didn't want what was on the table. He just wanted the crumbs that fell from the table. And the book lets us know that it probably didn't even cross Lazarus' mind to own the table. Didn't want to own the table. Didn't want anything that was on the table. Didn't want the room where the table was set. And I'm sure it didn't cross his mind to own the house where the room was, where the table was. Oh, praise is due to Allah. Oh, poor Lazarus, just begging for the crumbs. Now, this Lazarus is an interesting character because John, the 11th chapter, the 35th verse, gives us one of the most focused on and shortest verses of the Bible at the 35th verse, Jesus wept. You may remember that one. Most of you that grew up in a big family, I know you remember Jesus wept. Because when it was time to eat and you were watching the table, you tried, you know you better not reach your hand on mama's table and don't say your blessing. So you tried to find the shortest one you could say. So you say, Jesus wept. talking about Lazarus and his female counterpart, Lazarine. All right. <laughs> Here is Lazarus in, the, in good health, not thinking about owning anything for himself, just wants the crumbs that fall from the table. And he was such an important character until John 11 says Jesus cried over Lazarus. What would make the master cry? What would make the one that the scriptures say is the son of the very God himself? What would make him shed tears? The book says in John that he loved Lazarus. What made him love Lazarus so much? Who is this Lazarus church? Have you ever thought about it? Who is this lazy man hanging around the gate that the Jesus found so much love and compassion for until he had to shed tears, tears himself? Who is this Lazarus? Book said that Jesus cried when he heard Lazarus was dead. Now the women, they were alive to some degree, Mary and Martha. You sing the song in the church, Oh Mary, don't you weep? Oh Martha, don't you moan? Mary and Martha were weeping and moaning, and Jesus was crying. All of this tear shedding over one Lazarus. Now you remember, Mary and Martha knew where Lazarus was buried. And they said that the Master has come. Some of you who are Masons and Eastern Star, you know what we're talking about. I'm not going to reveal your secrets, but you know that it's a shallow grave. Talk back to me. You know it was a grave that wasn't supposed to be able to hold Lazarus. It was a shallow grave. He wasn't really dead. He was just on a dead level. 
Huh? All right now. Now the book teaches us that while he was there in the grave, that Mary and Martha, I'll get back to the rich man, Mary and Martha had to show Jesus the master where he was laid. That's right. Which means that their eyes were at least partially open. Uh -huh. They could see a little bit. Yeah. Who is this in the book? Uh -huh. Honorable Elijah Muhammad says it's talking about you, uh -huh. black woman. Yes. And Lazarus is the black man. Uh -huh. He has been killed by a wicked, cruel master and oppressor. Yeah. He has been robbed completely of a knowledge of himself. Uh -huh. The Masons say he was hit in the head at the East Gate, yeah. carried on a westernly coat, uh -huh. buried under an old rubbish heap uh -huh. in a western corner, yeah. in a shallow grave, uh -huh. that a sprig of evergreen was placed on the grave to show that there was life still in the grave, uh -huh. that there was a chance of him getting up. But the master would have to come if he was going to get up. So Mary and Martha said, Jesus is here. The master is here with the master grip that won't slip. The master grip that will be able to raise Lazarus from a dead level to a living perpendicular and stand him upright on the square. All right, bear with me, bear with me. Here he is, in the grave, Mary and Martha, the black woman, showing the master Jesus where he is. In the book of Kings, Mary and Martha, in another sense, the black woman, is referred to as a widow. Why are you referred to as a widow, black woman? Look around you in the church. You're the backbone of the church. That's right. Look around you in the movements of black people. That's right. You, black woman, are the backbone of those movements. That's right. That's right. You at least have your eyes partially open. Uh -huh. Look around you. The white man has pushed you in many instances and elevated you. He hasn't put you up with him, but he has at least pushed you and elevated you. And now you find it hard to find a black man right. that you can relate to because of the high mental and spiritual plane that you now travel on. Yeah. Oh, praise the yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So the book of Kings calls you a widow. And it says that one would come by the name of Elijah. And Elijah would have the master grip to raise the widow's son. I'm talking to you. Would have the master grip to raise the widow's son. You're called a widow, black woman, because the white man has killed your man. Has killed the black man. Killed him mentally and spiritually. Uh -huh. Hit him in a, head, a blow to the head which has rendered him dead. Yes, so he's not a builder anymore. That's right. He is the descendant of pyramid That's right. That's right. Here the planet Earth is over 196,940,000 square miles. Yes. And here he was thousands of years ago. He knew the very perfect center of the Earth. That's right. Your man was a builder, a shaper, a molder, and a fashioner, a creator of world. He moved in the image and after the likeness of the supreme being, his father, his daddy, almighty God. Right. But your man, black woman, has been killed. That's right. He hasn't built anything That's right. in a long, long time. Right. Hasn't built anything. That's right. You don't have the pride like the white woman to walk into your supermarket and push a basket down the aisle. And the supermarket was set up by your man. And you helped him at his side think, plan, and formulate the establishment of that supermarket. You're a widow, black woman. You don't have the pleasure and the joy to reach on the shelf and get some Zulu green beans <laughs> from the shelf. I'm just putting him to the test. He said, stand up, boy, and open your mouth, and I will speak 
for you and through you to the people. I didn't want to say what I want to say. I spent all the week working on what I wanted to say to you. But today we wanted to hear, thus saith the Lord. Today we wanted to hear what God had to say to you. So I stand as a medium through which he can speak to you. Just a microphone with a bow tie. Yes, <laughs> a widow, a man who allows her to be shot down in cold blood. Sister Eula Love, and the countless Eula Loves all across this country. Yes, a man who will allow you to be insulted by a savage beast right. and a devil. That's, right. That's what I said. That's right. I'm your brother. That's right. And I didn't come to lie to you, right. nor did I come to placate you in your weakness. Right. I came to speak the truth to you. Whether you like that truth or not, that is what he will Roberta Weintraub is the devil. We've been knowing she was the devil. You just getting around the halfway considering that she may be the devil. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, and Revelation backs him up. Revelation backing him up in the 12th chapter, in the 12th verse. Says, therefore rejoice ye heaven. And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. So the devil knows that his world is falling down. The devil knows that his economy is in trouble. We're still talking about the rich man. So since the devil knows that he has but a short time, Revelation said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you're going to see a naked beast stripped of all signs of civility. Just come out as your opening. No more smiling and beguiling and shaking and faking and fooling you. But a naked beast. Peace. A devil is going to come out and just show you, nigga, I don't want you. I have no place for you. I'm sick of you. Oh, We hate to see our people shot down in cold blood. We hate to see Sister Rita Walters embarrassed and her family embarrassed. And we do not sympathize with her. We empathize with her because she is flesh of our flesh, blood of our blood, and bone of our bone. So when she hurts, we hurt. And we must begin to be that way, Ward, Nation of Islam, wherever you come from. We have got to be like the systems and the organs of the body that are connected by a delicate nervous system. That when you mash down on Reverend Reed at Ward, Nation of Islam stands up. All praise to All praise to But the reason some of your jaws were tight and your faces were tight is because you have become desensitized. You don't hurt when your people hurt. Yeah. You don't feel when your people feel. Right. So on, the book calls you black woman, a widow. That's right. A woman whose man is dead. That's right. Oh, he goes through the motions. We go through the motions, but we're not the men that we should be, right. could be, right. would be, right. and must be if we are to survive. Right. We have been killed as me, robbed completely of a knowledge of ourselves. Right. Once rulers in the earth that reflected God's own divine wisdom. Right. The givers of law, science, music, government, and civilization itself to the world. A people who are the very people of the God family. The creator's nation, God's chosen people, and your man is dead today. So it says Jesus the master was hurt that that one who reflected God in the past. The black man now reflects own God, but there was a time when he reflected 
reflected God. There's a difference in reflecting on God and reflecting God. So Jesus, knowing how you were, the book says he cried when he saw the pitiful condition you were in. And your woman having to hurry the master. Say, come on. Say, he's been dead four days, Lord. 400 years. Say, Lord, have mercy. have mercy. Say, he's stinking he's been dead so long. Yeah. Isn't that what they said? Right. Said he's been dead so long until he's stinking. Come on, master. Uh. And then Mary and Martha stopped him and said, Lord, if you would have been here, uh. he never would have died. Right. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm glad I wasn't here. Uh. He said that his death is not to be a full and a complete death. But the condition that he is in is a divine condition. And the condition that he is in is to, for the Son of Man to be put in the position to show forth the glory, the honor, and the power of Almighty God. So Jesus said, all oh, praise you. So Jesus said, I'm glad that I wasn't here. But again. It was the black woman who had to show the master where he was laid. Back and then back. As Lazarus, you see you got two different Lazarus here and two different stories. But they're both talking about you and they're both talking about me at different stages of our development. Lazarus begging for the crumbs that fall from the rich man's table uh, is talking about the black man and black woman refusing to stand up and do something for themselves. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen, amen, church. Amen. I said amen. amen. All right, you were kind of weak the first time. <laughs> I told you, I'm happy in the church. Refusing to do something for self. Every time you see them, the best minds we have. Give me. Let me have. Can you spare? We want affirmative action. We want full employment. We want a job. That's not progress, Lazarus. Lazarine. That's what the white man brought us here for, to give us a job. There was no unemployment on the plantation. There was no unemployment on the plantation. Every slave on the plantation had a job and didn't need no Humphrey Hawkins beer. Come on, had a job. But now close to 50% of the black nation is unemployed and you're still hanging at the gate of the white man's broken promises, begging him for something that you now have the power and the strength to get up and the wisdom and the spirit to do for you. Hanging at the gate of the white man's broken promise. History best qualified to reward our research. He or she who does not learn the lessons of history is doomed to repeat them. The Indian had many laws passed for him. Many treaties were signed. Paper from one end of the country to the other end of the country. And the white man broke every treaty he had with the Indians. Right. Indians say he's a pale face. Right. Uh, the white man speak with forked tongues. Right. Say one thing on one side of his mouth, another thing on the other side of his mouth, and come out of his neck with something totally different. I know some of your seats are a little hot. Stand up. And by the grace of God, he'll give you the strength to fan your seat and sit back down. 
Jesus says in the 8th chapter of John that you shall know the truth and the truth not shall set you free the book says and the truth will make you free when you hear the truth there's just something about you black man and woman because your nature is righteousness your nature is truth your nature is the nature of God himself so when you hear the truth there's something about the very spiritual ones of you that begins to turn you on and fire and inspire your soul. Those of you who are not so spiritual, you begin to say, oh, I already knew that. I knew that. Why do you say that? Because the truth is your nature. And when you hear the truth, because it's such a part of you, it flows in your veins and it bathes your brains and it comes from every fiber in the core of your being until when you hear the truth you swear it came from you you just swear it came from you because it just agrees with you Solomon says let us reason together that's why we're here today to reason together not going to be long but I am going to be strong for the few moments that I'm up here. Now, here we are. We handle our aggregate income over a hundred billion dollars a year. Black people. Can you imagine Lazarus with a hundred billion dollars in his pocket? <laughs> hanging outside the rich man's gate. <laughs> Say, look here. Please come help me. And Lazarus with a pocketbook with a hundred billion dollars in the pocket. Beg begging for somebody to help him. You too, Lazarine. Begging. You got part of the hundred billion dollars too in your pocketbook. In them other places you be keeping. I ain't giving up the secret. I'm not giving up the secret. The safe deposit areas. I'm not giving it up. Hanging around the gate. Say the rich man sent the dogs out on Lazarus. That's right. And the dogs licked Lazarus' sores. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the sores represent the sore, pitiful, wretched condition of a people who are ragged, hungry, naked, and out of doors. That's right. A people, again, who have been robbed and spoiled. And the dogs of the historical story had compassion on Lazarus right. and licked his soul. Right. You know we haven't been so fortunate wow. with the dogs that the rich man has sicked on us. That's right. They don't lick our soul. That's right. You know I'm telling the truth. That's right. Many times the dogs actually bit the breast of our sisters off in those foolish protest marches we had. That's right. He would unleash his dogs on our women and on our children while we marched trying to get in talk about open up the gate what gate uh, not the white man's gate that's right. the song ain't talking about that gate uh, it's talking about the gate that only God can open up that's right. you can't serve two masters church you go either love one and hate the other that's right. you can't serve the devil and God too the book says how long will you halt between two opinions yeah. That's right. either you're gonna serve God or you're gonna serve the white man That's right. everything that God says thou shalt not do That's the right. white man says oh it's all right buddy gee whiz guy I mean well you only live once guy I mean, gee, wow. I mean, you know, it's all right. What he's saying? Try it. You'll like it. God says, thou shalt not do certain things. That's right. But through his radio, through his television, through his newspaper, through his magazine, through those that he sends in among us. That's right. He is able to direct us off of the course and the path of Almighty God and down the primrose path of That's hell right. and destruction where he is headed. That's right. That's right. So the book says that the rich man lost all of his wealth. Wow. If you don't see the rich man going down, you're blind. That's right. Didn't you hear what happened at Ford? Wow. 
Chrysler, right. General Motors. Right. Have you heard of a thing that they call inflation? Recession? Threshold of the depression? Have you heard of the devaluation of the dollar? Have you heard that the American dollar used to have silver certificate written at the top? Yes, right. Payable to the bearer on demand. That's right. Silver or gold. Uh -huh. But now it has Federal Reserve note written at the top. That's right. It's a promissory piece of paper. That's right. Or is he so slick and so quick until you can't see what's happening? That's right. Come, Come forth, Lazarus. That's right. The rich man is done. Yes, the rich man has lost his prestige and honor all around the world. That's right. Where the rich man, America, used to be able to buy friends and intimidate nations. Right. She is no longer able to buy friendship. Right. And no one is intimidated by her. A little straw-chewing, beard-wearing man that just sits around and recites the Quran. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, all day long called Khomeini. Huh. A little scrawny nation just snatches off some white folks and holds them in Iran and <laughs> Smacks the rich man in his face. <laughs> his name is, they call him the Ayatollah, but the correct Arabic pronunciation is Ayatullah. And Ayatullah in Arabic means the sign of God. He ain't God. Don't even know if he's divine, but I know he's being used in a divine way. And he's a sign, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, what you see on distant shows. Revolution in Liberia, That's right. where the traitors who were in the key positions, revolution in Ghana, revolution in Guinea, That's right. revolution in Iran, right. revolutions around the world, revolutions in South America, That's right. revolution brewing in the Caribbean. That's right. Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, what you see on the distant show, yes, know that in a, just a few days, they will be at your own doors. In just a few days, those of you who are in key positions, yes. those of you who are in positions of influence, yes. those of you who could help our people get up from the condition they're in, when the people come to power, they will remember you. That's right. They will remember how you would stand up and lie to them yes. and tell them that Jimmy Carter is their friend. Yes. When just a few days ago, every one of you, I read it, throughout the country in major media that came out. I attended one of the sessions where uh, Brother Perrin Mitchell, Sister Collins, and Brother John Conyers, and at that time Diggs and some others were, where they were talking about the recalcitrance of the American uh -huh. government. Talking about how Jimmy Carter had promised but had failed you. Right. You remember, right. just a few days ago, they were saying that Jimmy had lied, right. that Jimmy had neglected black people. Uh -huh. But now you come out to the ignorant masses of black people in their condition of suffering. You come out knowing that they are very brilliant in many areas, but there are areas where they are a little hazy and cloudy. Right. And so you come out and lie to them, right. like an old house nigga. Uh -huh. Come out with a coat on this short, that the master gave you an old top hat on. Master giving you a little position so you come out and tell the field niggas that old master is all right. Vote for the master. Who you gonna vote for in November? Anderson, Reagan, Carter, and Kennedy just got kicked out. Satan, the devil, Lucifer, and Beelzebub. And either one you vote for, you gonna still end up catching hell. Come on, Lazarus. In fact, they should pass out catcher's mitts at the polling precinct so you can catch your hell in style for the next four years and don't miss nothing that's coming to you. It is time for you, Lazarus, to get up from the gate of the rich man and do something for yourself. Before it is too late, the rich man died and went to hell, Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham. Right. And the rich man in his torment, now seeing that he's going down the tubes, he reaches for a black mare. Right. 
He reaches for a black congressman. He reaches for a black senator. He reaches for a black ambassador. He reaches for a head of the World Bank. That's a tip. Listen for it in the future. He listens for this one. He listens for that one to pull in Lazarus because he can see that the rich man, he, he can see that he's going down. So he's calling out Father Abraham. Send me Lazarus. Give me a black mayor. Give me a black senator. Give me a black congressman that they can come and dip their fingers in the water and come and cool my parched, thirsty tongue because I'm going down. But Abraham said, no. Abraham said, they can't come to you. And you can't come to them. Abraham said, there's a gulf between you. A separation has to take place, Abraham said. Revelation says, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers in her sins and receivers in her sins. Revelation says in the 18th chapter, says she has become the habitation of devils. She has become the whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That's your book. Stop going by the book and go in the book. Say she has become the habitation of death. She has become the whole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Few more points and I'm gonna sit down. America's supposed to be a melting pot where she called in the criminals from around the world. That's right. This government was established on criminality. That's right. Every law in the penal code system of California was violated in order to establish this land. That's right. Arm robbery. Strong arm robbery. That's right. Didn't she kill millions of Indians and take this land? Right. Talk back to me, church. Yes. Amen. Yes. Did she do it? Yes. Do you love truth or not? You, I heard you sing glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Right. She stole the country from the Indians. Right. Killed millions of Indians. Right. Then came and got your and my four parents and made them work from sun up to sundown. Right. From Cape Sea morning to Cape Sea night right. to build this land for her. Right. Revelation says she has become the habitation of death. Right. She opened up all of the prisons of Europe and called in criminals. George Washington had a criminal background. Right. Old Thomas Jefferson had a criminal background. Right. Old Patrick Henry had a criminal background. Right. Criminals established the government. That's right. Killed millions of Indians and killed millions of us and then made up laws yeah. to protect what they had taken from the rest of the world. That's right. Am I lying? Right. You may hate me today for the truth, but in a few days you will love us for what we say. All right. oh, praise is due to Allah. Right. She has become the habitation of devils. As war and revolution is raging in Zimbabwe, as you call it Rhodesia, white folks who have been there a long time having to hurriedly grab what little they can and run. Where do you think they're going to run? Straight to America. As war and revolution begins to brew in Azania, or so-called South Africa. Uh -huh. Where do you think they're going to fly to? That's right. The hateful bird is going to fly and take wings from Rhodesia to America. That's right. The hateful bird is going to fly and take wings to the haven called America. That's right. When they are run out of their dens all around the world. Where do you think these unclean and foul spirits and hateful birds, where do you think these devils will come? They are coming into America, so now there's a rise in the Ku Klux Klan. There's a rise in a Nazi fascist mentality. The United States government is looking you squarely in the face and saying there is no affirmative action. Give you a little bit, but that's all we can give. That's as far as we can go with you. And you rejoice over political positions when we held political positions during the days of Reconstruction. That's right. And everyone rejoiced and thought we had made it, that we were over. We looked like we held more political positions then, in some instances, than we do now. That's right. But in an instant, he rolled back everything, That's right. erased all of the political positions, That's right. kicked the congressmen out, That's kicked right. the senators out, kicked us out of every position and started hanging us again. Lynch
imagine us again. And it took you years and years and scores of years to recover, decades to recover from what you thought was a period of political prosperity. That's right. He who does not learn the lessons of history That's right. is doomed to repeat them. That's right. So here we are today, a gulf being set divinely between Lazarus, us, and the rich man. Yes, the natural course of events and the divine supreme being, the will of Almighty God, the one God, yes, Allah, is setting a gulf between us. Yes, he is creating the circumstances that will force you to stand up and do for yourself. Yes, he is forcing a Roberta Weintraub to stand up and say what she said. Yes, she had no control over herself. Ah. She apologized for saying it on radio. Right. She didn't apologize for saying it. Right. What did she mean by I apologize for saying it on radio? Right. She meant I am the devil, right. but I wasn't ready for you to know that yet. Right. And I slipped. <laughs> In the Holy Quran, the devil says, respite me until the day when they are raised. Give me some slack, God. Let me have a little cover for a while. Respite me until the day when they are raised. But the God's spirit is stirring in the people. He is creating more and more and more and mounting dissatisfaction in you. And it's not but a few more days that you will realize that the rich man is dying. That Babylon is falling. That Pharaoh can no longer entice you with wealth and nearness to him. That's right. That when he had a lot, he only gave you a little bit. Now he only has a little bit himself. That's right. Instead of welfare, it will be farewell right. in a few days. <laughs> the crumbs falling from the table integrate the schools, admitting that you can't set up schools yourself when you are some of the sitting probably in this audience, some of the best educators that American institutions have ever produced. But you're scared to even peep up on the table, Lazarus. Look up there on the table, Lazarus. You can build a table. We can come together and build a house. We can't subsist off of crumbs. Integrating the schools won't do it. Busting our children, our poor babies, way out somewhere to sit with some white folks won't do it. Oh, no. You busting the children and the white man busting you upside your head. <laughs> so when the Jesus went to the grave, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Books say Lazarus shook and stepped out of the grave. That's right. Hands bound. Feet bound. Uh, Napkin over his face. That's right. Now what is this talking about? Uh, I know you can just see a man coming out with some ropes on or handcuffs and, <laughs> and a dinner napkin over his face. Uh, oh, brother and sister, such a kindergarten interpretation that I have had and many of us have had in the past. Right. It's time for the master Jesus to turn water into one. Water is a flat. It represents divine truth and wisdom in some instances. But when it says Jesus would turn water into wine, it means he would take a flat spiritless message and give it divine spirit and substance that would, as you say, I looked at my hands and they were new. I looked at my feet and they were too. It would be a divine spirit in the word from water that is flat and spiritless and could not move a people. He would come with a divine truth that would transform the flat spiritless message, the water, into wine right. that would give the people divine spirit and a divine mind. That's right. And we would be like the worm, the caterpillar, and the butterfly. Yeah. We would begin to come out of our cocoon. We would be like the little acorn that would burst forth from a little tiny object to a tall oak tree so tall until we have to bend our backs to see the height of our cup. We would be like the little chick in the prison house called Ed. They would call on the cosmos to get everything that it needed in the eggshell. And after 21 days, do herself 
Tom a beat, cracked a shell, and then burst forth into the light of the truth. His hands bound, meaning he couldn't do anything for us. His feet were bound. He couldn't make steps of progress toward freedom and independence in the divine manner that God intended. He would be calling himself a Muslim or a Methodist, but the spirit would have to be strong. Muslim means one who submits to the divine and universal order of things. One who is striving to be righteous and walk after the divine order of things. A Methodist is one who is imbued with the divine method, the way, the manner, and the system of the God himself. All praise to Jesus his feet would be bound and he couldn't go anywhere for himself toward progress. He couldn't do anything for himself. And even if he could, his eyes were covered up. Lazarus, the book says, had a napkin over his eyes and he couldn't see. So it says that the master, who is the eye opener, that the master would have to take, have him to take the napkin from his eyes. Told him, loose him. Let him go. He was in a grave. And it's interesting that the root of the term grave is the same root of gravity. And the ceiling of gravity is six miles high. And in order to get out of the pull of the Earth's rotation, as it spins at 1,037 and a third miles per hour, in order to get out of the pull of the Earth's rotation and out of the, beyond the gravity, the ceiling of gravity, beyond six miles, one must have a strong booster rocket. Right. You gotta have something strong enough to get you out of the pull of the grave right. of the white man. Right. Out of the pull of the gravity of the wicked Western world. Right. Or God would have to come. The master, after not having been on the scene for a while, just to allow that certain circumstances would be created that he ultimately could show his power forth through you and me. Right. Then we would get the strong booster rocket. Right that would be able to lift us up out of the pool of the white man's world. Right. And our hands would be free. Uh, our feet would be free. Right. The napkin would be removed from our eyes. Right. We would be able to say in the words of Dr. King, free at last, yes, free at last. Yes, Thank God Almighty that in a few days, with unity as we have, Reverend Reed, and others of us, we hope to affect throughout this city. With this kind of unity, we will truly be able to say, free at last. Elijah Muhammad, Minister Louis Farrakhan, and I will give him the report he's speaking in Detroit today. I will give him the report tonight and let him know how warm and graciously we were received by Reverend Reed and by all of the members and family of Ward. And I'm sure that though the devil is upset, yes, sir. as we begin to really work and become closer and our bond tighter and stronger, Yes, we will be able to say in the words of the scripture, the stone that the builders rejected right. yes, now become the headstone of the corner. Right. This is the Lord's doing. Yes, and it is mine. Say man again. Yeah. 
Say, say amen one more time. Didn't our hearts burn within us as the man of God stood by the wayside? Yeah, it's a two-edged sword. Yeah, he wasn't too long, but he sure enough was strong. Amen. I saw a lot of grains opening up. Saul felt that gravitational pull being moved out of the way and the booster rockets moving. Good God from Zion. It's all right. This is what our people need more of. Amen. It was thought provoking. It was very well put together. It was well researched. But most of all, it was in the spirit of God. God is good. The word says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Doesn't say the Methodist flesh. Doesn't say the Baptist flesh. Doesn't say the Muslim flesh. It says, I will pour it out upon all flesh. And your sons, Lord have mercy. Like Dr. Malik Rashidin will dream dreams. And your old men shall prophesy. God is good. Now it's time to go. But I want you to go and take a message with you. That God is moving in Los Angeles. And Lazarus and Lazarine in Los Angeles is getting ready to wake up. For when the truth is spoken, what happened in the dry bones? When the word was spoken, the bones began to move. When Dr. Rashadin started speaking, some Christian bones started moving. And then some Muslim bones started moving. And by the time he finished, he had all them bones back together because the Spirit of God was moving. Well, I'm finished now. Finished, finished, finished. But this is the beginning and not the end. Black folk, all of us talk a good game. Amen. But then when it comes time to doing the hard, necessary work and the disciplined work that the kind of program Dr. Rashad Dean is talking about, you can't find us. So we're getting ready. This is but one step. And the choir is going to sing before we leave first the tape of this thought-provoking message. Somebody called it a lecture. It was a sermon. Amen. That's what it was. Now I know I'm going to get me a copy. And I'm going to get my wife one too so she don't listen to mine and mess mine up. <laughs> Amen. But you should get you a copy. Get you, get you, get you. There's a green 1978 Buick. See? You be off on the Lord's business and then something always happens. I'm going to come back to it though. A green Buick. Regal. License plate. Old 68. XT7. Will you please tell Diane Weintraub to let my people go. Go down and watch and tell them the PCP pushers to let my people go. Go down to Fontana and Inglewood and tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. There may be somebody here this morning. That's right, sing, brother. Who's come alive. Maybe somebody that wants to join the church. Maybe somebody that wants to join the nation of Islam. Whatever your choice is this morning. If you wish to join the say man. Say man again. Say, say amen one more time. And now we have come to the moment that we have all been waiting for. We have had all of the appetizers. And now we are ready for the main course. 